at that point right now with my eyelash extensions that I sleep on this side and these are almost completely gone and then these are like still going pretty strong but I could not get an appointment and I cannot get this barnacle off of me so it's been challenging to get in there so we're just gonna pretend that my eyelashes look fantastic okay all right if you are new here my name is Kristen Leanne I am a mom of two under two I've got Wyatt here, uh, he is seven weeks old, almost two months, and I also have a 17 month old daughter as well. Her name is Harlow. Um, I wanted to film this video like postpartum, um, healing, how everyone's doing, how Wyatt's doing, all of this like a month ago, but I didn't get around to it, so we're gonna do it today. Um, I had completely different birth experiences with my first versus my second. If you've seen those videos or you've been here for a while, you know that, but if you're new here, my first one um, was, I was in labor for almost a week. It was very traumatic. Um, that video will be linked below if you wanna catch up or kind of like be in the know. Uh, Wyatt here as my second um, came extremely fast. I almost had him in the car um, and my birth was unmedicated at a hospital. So um, my, my breastfeeding journey with each of them has been completely different too. There's also a video on that. Um, so I guess like we can just go into, kind of wanted to like update you guys on how everything's going, how I'm doing, how Wyatt's doing, and answer some of your burning questions. There wasn't a single question about sex, which I'm shocked. Um, but yes, I'm back at it. <laughs> we are being careful. Um, I am doing pretty well, I would say. Uh, putting makeup on and doing my hair and taking a shower isn't something that I've been doing a lot of lately. Uh, so this is a rare moment where I look somewhat put together minus my lashes. So sad, a moment for the lashes. With this being an unmedicated birth, I've healed way faster. Um, I think, I don't know if I've already had a period, but I stopped bleeding for like a week and it was done. And that happened, gosh, I want to say around a month. And with my first one, I feel like I was still bleeding like two and a half, three months in. Um, and that was medicated. Uh, so I stopped bleeding about three or four weeks in after his birth. And even then it was way lighter than the first go around. Uh, and I, was pretty stoked on that. But then a week went by and then I had like a couple days of spotting again. So I was like, did I just like have a mini period already? Because that did not happen with my first. So I'm curious to hear from you guys how that's been, those of you that had an unmedicated birth, how is your bleeding? Did that happen? Like how quickly did you have your period again? I don't think I got my period again for three or four months after giving birth to my daughter. So I don't know, um, but healing was so much faster with a non-medicated birth. Everything was faster, I really like healing. Um, I just felt way better overall and I still, <laughs> that like noise, he does it all the time like, <gasps> like he hasn't gotten an ear, uh, uh, any air for like 10 minutes. Like he does that in the middle of the night too. And now I know that he's totally fine, but like it was like really nerve wracking. Um, so uh, what else here? Wyatt is doing really quite well. There are some things that um, I wish I could change a tiny bit to make my life a little bit easier, but I'll talk to you guys about that when we get into some of the questions. Um, and how is it with two under two? That is a question, so I'll answer that when I get there, but I do plan on making a video. I've made a very um, in-depth, uh, educated list about things that I, like, I wish I knew, slash like tips for those of you who are gonna be going into two under two or close to it. Uh, and I highly recommend watching it. Um, I put a lot of thought into it and I will be filming that very soon. Maybe I'll even film it today, depending. It's already 1.40, so I don't really see that happening. Okay, let's just jump right into question number one. How are you managing both of them? So this is going to be different for everybody, but I'm just gonna answer personally. So I have a full-time nanny that's here Monday through Friday, uh, 8.30 to 4.30, um, and on Wednesdays is the only day that I have where Harlow is out of the house, where she goes somewhere else to be watched. So it is, um, it's been and challenging. And if you're new here, I'm married to a firefighter. So sometimes I will be alone for multiple days on end, meaning I'm doing the mornings myself and the nighttimes myself. Um, 
and all the time, pretty much myself with him, I haven't really given over responsibility to anyone or our nanny with him yet. Some moms are the type that like to, you know, they really soak up and enjoy like having their baby on them 24 seven. I'm just gonna be totally honest, I'm not that mom. I, that doesn't mean that I don't love bonding with my baby or cuddling with him or that I don't enjoy this time. I definitely am soaking it up for what it is. But I'm also the type of person who is very busy. I keep my house as clean as I possibly can. I'm always doing something. I have a bunch of animals to take care of. I'm always vacuuming. If you've seen my vlogs, like you've seen me in action and like I go, go, go. And it's been very challenging with him stuck to me. So I definitely enjoy my alone time and my space. So it has been a little difficult having him on me as much as he is because I didn't experience that with my first because I had so much help because she was so colicky. Um, I had my mom in town, grandparents in town. Nick was uh, took way more time off. So um, I would say, okay, that was a lot to go through, but I just wanted to give you an idea of the situation and how what my setup is. So when I answer, you're not comparing yourself and like, oh my gosh, like, you know, whatever. So um, I am super lucky to have a full-time nanny and it is super helpful. I think I would absolutely be losing my mind if I didn't. Like hats off to everybody who are full-time stay-at-home moms. I do not know how you do it. I think you're cut from a different cloth and that is incredible. Um, I don't think that I was made that way. I love to work. I love to do my own thing. Um, and this will kind of come up in a question in a little while too. And I think everyone's just a little bit different. But for me personally, um, the nights that I'm alone for days on end, or if I'm alone like a Friday night and all weekend um, through like Monday, it's, it's very challenging. Having two is very difficult. There's a lot that I didn't realize or that I wish I knew before, which is gonna go in that video. I highly recommend watching it. Um, and I think it'll help prep you and it will help you get some things together before you bring home baby number two so that you can have it all under control as much as possible. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been difficult to manage. There's also been a lot of uh, regressions with Harlow and just like attitude changes. And obviously she's growing up too. She's going to be, you know, two in, you know, I would say, I wouldn't say soon, but like half a year. Um, so that sounds crazy. Like what, seven, eight months she's going to be too. Uh, so let's jump into question number two. I'm going to try and go through these as quickly as possible. If you want to put this on like faster looping, you can get through it faster. But um, what nursing bra am I using? So I'm really not picky on this. I have not found a bra that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so much better than this other one. I will say that the, um, I pulled this out for you guys. I don't know if this is clean or dirty or what, but um, this is from Amazon. It comes in a set and this just snaps off of here. That has been my favorite one so far. They are not the most supportive. Um, this is, by the way, an XL. So um, just to give you an idea, I'm 5'9 and I'm 155 pounds right now. So, um, and I'd say I'm in the middle on this. This comes in a set. I like this one. Uh, currently, what I have on under this is just a bralette. Those are cheap and easy and you just pull it up or pull it down to nurse and it's, it's easy enough to use. So I don't really have a favorite. Is it harder going from zero to one child or from one child to two? Um, definitely different, uh, but I would say going from zero to one has been the hardest transition. And I feel like sometimes I'm still feeling that and like still kind of like mourning the days when I didn't have to put hardly anything in the car to get out the door. And sometimes somehow I was still late. Uh, it is definitely harder and has been harder for me, in my opinion, to go from zero to one because when you're going from zero to like, when you don't have kids, there's so much you don't have to account for when you leave the house, when you leave things on the counter or at the coffee table or leave things out or with pets or plans that you want to make or bars that you want to go to or dinners that you want to go to, um, you know, food you're making for yourself. Like you don't have to think about anybody but yourself basically, unless you're married um, or have a significant other that maybe lives with you. But I would say that it was definitely more challenging lifestyle wise and whatnot and me time, et cetera, for, from going from zero to one. Zero or from one to two is definitely a transition, but I have 
all the stuff. I like know what I'm doing. I feel more confident what I'm doing. Um, I know that it's going to be hard. I know that I'm going to have sleepless nights. I, you know what I mean? So like, it's definitely easier going from one to two. Don't get me wrong. It's still hard, but it's easier. How was the birth? So, um, pretty fast, pretty easy. <laughs> Almost had him in the car, uh, unmedicated out of hospital. I do have a video on Wyatt's birth, like I said, as well as Harlow. So I'll link it for you guys in the description box. Breastfeeding journey. I also just put up a video on this as well. So I'll link you to that, but it's been going a lot easier this time around. And, um, yeah, if you want to know more about that, I'll link that for you too. There's like a whole, I think it's like 30 minutes long, all about breastfeeding and the journey from with my first one, which was very difficult with Wyatt, which has been quite a bit easier. Things I love most about my body after pregnancy. Um, and this person said like a lot of times, like the negative things get talked about. I feel like, I don't want to say like it's all negative because I don't want to be a negative Nancy, but I would say a majority of the changes that I've seen with my body after pregnancy are things that I would prefer that had not happened. Um, but you know, it just is what it is. Like your body created a human and that's amazing. So whether it's negative or whatever, whether I perceive it as negative, like I don't really care. It, you know, it is what it is. I did something freaking amazing and look what I have to show for it. So it's, it's whatever. Um, one thing that I will say, um, uh, after pregnancy is that my, I'm a lot curvier than I was before. My hips are a bit wider. Like I posted a photo on uh, Facebook the other day and I was like, I'm way curvier. And people are like, Oh my God, that's what you call curves. I said curvier, meaning curvier than I was. I'm not saying I'm curvy. Um, and people just like lost their freaking toupees over it. I was just like, dude, fucking sit down, shut up. Um, but I'm definitely curvier. My hips are wider. Um, and I like that. I, like the way that I look. It sucks that like a lot of my jeans don't fit anymore. Don't get me started on shoes not fitting. Um, but yeah, I like, I like, I like the curvier version of myself for sure. I could do without my nipples being like 10 times larger. That's something I could do without, but we're not going to go down the negative road of what I don't like about my body after. Um, because I kind of just like, don't focus on that. It just, it is what it is. Like it's not going to fix anything or make anything better if I focus on it. So, um, I'm just focusing on the things that I like and just moving forward. Do you want more babies? Are you wanting to jump into baby number three? So, uh, when I was pregnant with Wyatt, I was like, okay, I feel like I want to and need to, um, for what I want, need to get pregnant within like three or four months after having Wyatt. I really would love to have a sister that's close to Harlow in age so that she can be best friends. Not that she won't be best friends with Wyatt, but they're two different genders. So most likely they're going to be quite a bit different than one another. So, um, I thought that, and I was kind of going back and forth in my head about that because I really wanted to get back to a weight that I was comfortable with and a health that I was comfortable with, um, and get, just get back to, you know, feeling and looking how I wanted to. And I never got there with, after like I had Harlow, I kind of got pregnant right away again. And by right away, I mean, I was seven months, um, postpartum when I got pregnant with Wyatt. So I was kind of going back and forth in my head about that. And I think I came to the conclusion that I just need time right now. Like I'm not really ready to be pregnant again. It's really weird though. Like my animalistic like voice inside my head and just like what humans like are like, um, created to do. I feel like my, my body is like, get pregnant again, get pregnant again. And I'm just not ready for that right now. I'm once he is a little more solo and independent, um, I shouldn't say solo, but like a little more independent, I am going to be going back to the gym regularly. I've already been back, um, once, but, um, with, uh, Nick being, but with Nick being a firefighter, it's been a little difficult in the mornings to get out the door myself. And like I said, he's kind of been a barnacle on me, so I haven't really fully gotten back to the gym. But yeah, I, I think we're going to probably wait a while if I even have number three. Uh, this is really challenging and it's kind of made me, um, rethink a third, to be honest. Um, it's been, I think I literally said to Nick last night, no more newborns. Uh, he's been very colicky and that's been a bit difficult. Uh, Harlow is extremely colicky. Um, and I'll go over that a little bit in a minute, but he has been very colicky as well. 
and I don't really even eat dairy, so I don't know what the issue is. I'm gonna keep trying different things, but it's been it's been a bit challenging. Um, luckily, he is very comfortable in this carrier, which is the Boppy, by the way. Um, there are three different versions of this. I freaking love this carrier. Uh, everything that like I talk about in this video will be linked and be listed in my Amazon storefront, so I'll link that. Um, shop link to you guys, but everything's there. What helped you the most during your unmedicated labor and delivery? So I would say a fan and a hand to squeeze. So Nick was out parking the truck when I, he almost missed Wyatt's birth. And I swear the nurse, I feel bad. She wasn't like able to do her job because I just was like squeezing her hand. Like you need something to squeeze onto. So I would say something to squeeze and a fan because I literally felt like I was going to faint when my contractions like were getting, like when he was right there about to come out, my contractions were so gnarly and I just felt like I was gonna faint. I was so hot. Uh, so the fan, the fan, I mean, the nurse was kind enough to sit there and fan me with like a, a page, um, but I had packed a fan, but none of my bags were in the room yet. So um, I would say like a fan if I had had it, or a piece of paper, I guess, and somebody to fan you and a hand to squeeze or something to squeeze. Like if I had a stress ball, that would have been great. But uh, I took it out all, uh, I took it all out on the nurse's hand and that was, yeah, that's what I needed at the moment. Best breast pump. I have about three. Um, I find myself using the like wireless electric Willow, I think it's the Willow Go. Um, I You can just pop it in your bra while you're doing the dishes, while you're sitting in bed, you know, while you're in the car. I have the Medela and the Lansino one. Those are both equally as good as one another. I don't find myself getting more milk out of one than the other between all three of them. It's the same. So for me anyways, so I tend to use the Willow a lot more. You have to remember to charge it and stuff. And it's kind of annoying to clean out as are all of them. But, um, I buy, I have bought like extra parts and pieces so that, um, I don't have to like sit there and clean it really quick to use it again. But that's been my favorite so far. Do your newborn sleep in your room? How do you sleep with newborn grunts? Yeah, this is, that is challenging. Um, newborns are very loud when they sleep. I don't think there's a single one that's quiet. He is quieter than some, I would say, but if he, like he's pushing farts out all night long and he definitely grunts and squirms uh, throughout that process. So it is challenging. I don't sleep with earplugs anymore, which has been hard to get used to, but I've been so effing tired that it's, I've managed to fall asleep, but it is hard because my husband snores. And so between the snoring and the grunting and the farting it, and those <gasps> things that he does is just, it is challenging. Um, and our newborns do sleep in our room. He sleeps in a bassinet right next to the bed, as did Harlow. We're using the same one. I think Harlow got kicked out of the room at about four months. I literally could not sleep with all the noise that she made. And not only that, but she cried a lot. So it was definitely time for her to be in her own space. Um, and that worked out really great for us, but yes, he is sleeping in our room and until we find a space for all my filming stuff and my animals, he doesn't actually have a room. So they might be sharing a room at some point. So he'll probably be in our room for a while. Any new gadgets you're loving this time around? I have not really been using a whole lot of gadgets. Um, I would say that this, this isn't really a gadget, but this, um, this, uh, I almost said Solly baby. This is not a Solly baby. This uh, boppy wrap has been probably like my favorite thing. There's also a um, portable breast pump. I think it's by, is it by Cork? I don't, I don't know the brand. I'm going to link it below for you guys. I, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on this, but it's like a portable bottle warmer and I'm going to put that below, but I'm going to be using that quite a bit. If you have another baby, would you do medicated or non-medicated? So if I have another baby, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have that baby in this house unmedicated in a pool of water. That's what I wanted to do with Harlow. And I think I'm going to do that if I get pregnant for a third time. Um, I don't think I would do a medicated birth. If it was my first and I was going to be in labor a week long, like I was with Harlow, I would definitely have a medicated birth so that I could just chill in the hospital and relax and watch Netflix like while I was going through those like week of gnarly contractions. But um, if it went like it did with this one for the third one, which I'm guessing it most likely will, now that they say your second and third, like it just gets easier and easier in terms of them coming out. So 
Um, with that being said, like if it was like his birth, I would definitely do it here and not medicated. Is being a boy mom different slash difficult than being a girl mom. I think it's like way too early right now to like really know. I will say that going through the circumcision and like dealing with that healing process, although it was pretty short, was definitely different. I didn't have to deal with that with Harlow. Um, so that was interesting. And um, Harlow is a really gnarly pee stream, just like me. Like I can pee pretty much like across the room if I really have to and there's some pressure built up but um he actually peed in his own mouth peed in his own mouth the other week that was that was new Harlow's gotten close but yeah that was definitely new he was like screaming while he was getting a bath which he always does screams during diaper changes getting a bath getting dressed all of it just screams the whole time and um yeah he peed in his own mouth so I don't know whether to be grossed out or like proud of it but it is what it is and I'm sure that as he gets older, it will definitely be two different things and it will be different um, for the simple fact that he has a penis and not a vagina. But um, yeah, I guess we'll see when we get there. Any advice on how to deal with uh, the pain of contractions? Were cramps worse this time? So in terms of cramps, I don't know if you're asking about like postpartum cramps, like when you're... Um, why can't I think of the word? When your parts are shrinking back down, yes, the cramps were way worse this time. I didn't even notice them with Harlow. This time, I think I had like, kind of like bad cramps for like almost a week, I'd say, five days, four or five days, something like that. And I definitely knew that it was going on and they were painful and um, it sucked to feel that on top of like the pain of breastfeeding because they're worse while you're breastfeeding. Um, and uh, it also sucked when obviously you're healing down there. But yeah, they were worse this time. Um, and advice on how to deal with the pain of contractions. So, I mean, unless you, I mean, if your water has broken, your contractions are more painful, um, which all of my contractions came after my water broke because my water broke and then contractions started about two hours later with him. So um, I don't know if I have any advice on it, but I would say that for me, standing on the counter and swaying back and forth, which you'll see in the birth video with him if you haven't watched it already, definitely helps take the edge off and just kind of moving. I wouldn't say walking because I had to have my eyes closed, but um, Definitely having a shower was very helpful too. Like I would just let the water like go over my face and it was nice and warm and the sensation of the water hitting me and the warmth of that definitely took my mind off of my contractions a little bit. Um, so yeah, those are the only two things that I can really think of. I, they are what they are. Like they, they suck. They're kind of like the most the most pain I've ever experienced in my whole life, I'd say. Um, I don't know whether the contractions were worse or pushing this baby out of my vagina with no medicine. I really don't know. <laughs> They're both equally pretty gnarly, but we are amazing and you can do it. So like, don't be worried about it. Don't be afraid. Like once you do it, you're going to be like, okay, now I know what it's all about. But contractions suck, man. They're, they're painful. Um, but those are kind of the only two things that like I do. Um, I haven't picked up anything else that helps. Worst postpartum struggle with Wyatt versus Harlow. So with Harlow, I struggled with hemorrhoids really bad. Um, and so pooping was difficult. I don't think I pooped for like two weeks. I was terrified to poop. Um, now I have, uh, I if you've seen my hospital bag video, which I'll link for you as well, I kind of talk about some of the things that I'm prepping for myself to not have that issue. But I will say psyllium husk is one of the best things you can get, which isn't in that video because I didn't have it until my stepmom came to town to help with the babies. But psyllium husk helped me like poop a nice soft poop and it was so great. I wish I had had that with Harlow. And so I was struggling with that and then her not nursing or like being okay in a carrier. She hated being in a carrier. She needed to see what was going on, even though she could only see 12 inches in front of her. She had to be facing outwards. She didn't like the carrier. She did not do well breastfeeding. We had a very hard time with breastfeeding. So those were my difficulties with her. And with Wyatt, I think the number one thing is he is colicky as well, but he will not let me put him down. Like this is pretty much how I am all day long until I get in bed at night, um, unless I have Nick here helping. But I have to wear him all the time. 
and my back hurts. And I usually have spit up, so I have a spit rag on here right now. I get sweaty, I get stinky, I don't get to change my clothes very much. I can't create any outfit videos for Instagram like I've wanted to do because he's stuck to me like a little barnacle. So I would say that those are um, the worst postpartum struggles, but yeah, he's colicky too. So that's been challenging. Uh, last one, why do some people recommend an electric pump and a pump with tubes? Um, I, so I'm curious if you mean like a Hakka. Uh, so I'm, I'm guessing you mean like an electric, like mobile pump, like the Willow Go that I was talking about versus one with tubes that's like plugged in. Um, they just serve two, and maybe I'm misunderstanding, but they just serve completely different purposes. Like an elect, I mean, they're both electric. Uh, or do you mean by pump with tubes, do you mean like the Hakka? If you mean the Hakka, the Hakka will sit, um, you can even put it like kind of sideways like this as opposed to just straight down collecting milk while your baby is breastfeeding and nursing on the other boob. Um, and that will collect milk and draw a suction and pull milk out while you're breastfeeding. Um, so people just, I mean, you can also put the willow go in one side while you're breastfeeding on the other, but I typically switch him side so I don't have to deal with that. But I might try the Hakka today just to see, cause sometimes I don't want to switch him. I just like, just do your thing. You're already on there. You got a good latch. Like, let's just do the thing. And then I have a boob that's engorged. So I might try the Hakka again. Um, my babies are big though, man. Like they kick it off. Like, I don't know. Um, and then obviously the electric pump, some people claim that the one that doesn't have like that doesn't plug in the wall that you have to sit to use isn't um like the willow go like isn't as strong as the other one like the suction or like whatever um like i said earlier i have not found that to be the case like literally i can um walk around and do stuff with a willow go which is great for me and people like me that like to be up and moving around um you also don't have to have your nipples out, which is the plus. And then the other one, you just have to sit. And I don't know, there's really not much of a difference in my opinion. That is the end of the Q&A. Hopefully that wasn't too long and boring. Um, and hopefully I answered some questions for you guys. If you have any other questions that I didn't answer, please leave them below. I will answer you and um, get back to you as soon as I can. But um, like I said, everything that I've talked about or that I recommend, um, postpartum care, etc., all that is linked in um, the description box. It's like my Amazon storefront, like I was saying. So check that out if you're interested. But thanks for watching, guys and I will talk to you guys in the comments. Bye.